In the process of deciding which rec to cover for this week's video, I ended up choosing a different option than the ones listed in Hornet's video. I will likely look at Hermes next weekend, but for this week, let's leave the Pacific behind and go to the sunny Mediterranean, and what might be the most famous Italian warship wreck in the form of the battleship Roma. This video will be a bit less detailed by comparison to the wrecks found by Petrol or Kaladin. Roma's wreck was surveyed in some detail by the Italians, but they generally show less wide-angle shots and less details on certain parts of the hull. Nonetheless, I will cover what has been released, and in as neat a format as I can. With that disclaimer done, this week's Shipwreck Sunday video, for lack of a better name, can begin. I have already covered Roma's story in a previous video. One of my more popular ones, in fact. As a short refresher for those who need it, or are otherwise unaware of her history, on September 9, 1943, the battleship Roma, Italy's newest and largest battleship, was sunk by German air attack. On the way to surrender to the Allies, as Italy switched sides in the war, Roma was hit by two Fritz X guided bombs. The second of the two led to her forward magazines detonating, throwing a turret into the air and breaking her back. She quickly capsized, broke in two, and sank, taking anywhere from 1,200 to 1,400 men with her, though sources differ on the exact number. As famous as this sinking was, Roma's wreck would go undiscovered for quite a long time. This in spite of being at the relatively, on shipwreck scales, shallow depth of 1,000 meters or 3,281 feet. It would only be in June 2012 that an Italian team discovered the shattered battleship. Part of the difficulty in finding Roma's wreck can be put down to the fact she came to rest at the bottom of an undersea canyon. While relatively shallow, in comparison to Titanic or Hornet, that made it more difficult to find her. Nonetheless, the Italians did find their battleship and sent down ROVs to take a closer look over several different expeditions. This is where things get a bit murky, though. Quite literally, as the waters around Roma, and her wreck itself, are far more silty than something like Hornet. This fact, coupled with the ship being more rusted out than the American wrecks, makes it a bit more difficult to make out what a specific picture is showing, unless it's something obvious, like a gun mount. Still, I'll do my best to point out specific features. I'll also link the video from the Italian Navy that covers one of the dives, so you can see the images in motion albeit without any commentary on what's on screen. Now, let's get into the meat of Roma's shipwreck. First, I'll begin with what I can't show before I move on to what I can show, and that is sadly sonar images, unlike the previous videos. I have not been able to find any outside the aforementioned Italian Navy video. I'll put a screen grab of that up now, but unfortunately, I don't have something like the excellent images of Hornet or Lexington. It is, of course, clear from this that Roma is broken apart. However, that was something we already knew, as there exist images of her breaking apart on the surface. Unfortunately, the sonar doesn't show her turrets, or anything like that. With that out of the way, I'll move on to pictures of the wreck itself now. Beginning with what might be one of the most famous images of Roma's wreck, and the first released. Her 90mm anti-aircraft guns. Even if the size of the wreck and the location hadn't given away the identity of Roma, these guns would have. There is no other wreck that would have this specific gun and this specific mounting, so finding this is a... well, a smoking gun, if you'll forgive the pun. Several of these guns have been photographed, showing them to be in... decent enough condition, considering. These were lightly built, one of the issues with them in service. And considering Roma's violent sinking, it's a bit of a surprise they're in as good of shape as they are. Even so, there's much more visible rust on these weapons in comparison to the 5-inch guns on an American carrier wreck. This will be a common theme throughout Roma's wreck, and a good demonstration of how different underwater conditions can impact how a ship rusts away. That's why I use the American carriers as a comparison here. That being said, between the close-up nature of the existing picks, and the fact that the guns are positively buried in silt, it is difficult to make out much more. It doesn't help that this is another area where things aren't very clear on Roma's wreck. 
The interactive map I'm using, which I'll link in the description, indicates that her 90mm guns and her superstructure came off and rest away from the main wreck. If that's the case, and it isn't just Roma being completely buried in the silt, I find it utterly fascinating that her tertiary battery and her superstructure managed to stay intact and in more or less the correct positions after falling away from the main hull. Leaving that aside, while we're on this part of her hull anyway, I'll take a quick look at her 37mm guns. Not only are these in worse shape in regard to rusting, they're also fairly buried in silt. This is in stark contrast to Pacific wrecks, which are, generally speaking, much clearer of mud and other such things. The guns are still more or less recognizable for what they were, but their mountings are completely buried. The sad thing is, this is still more recognizable than her secondary battery. The pictures I'm showing on screen now seem to be of one of her secondary 6-inch turrets. However, either the guns themselves are flat out missing, or the Italian expeditions took no pictures of them. The barbette is recognizable, in the sense that it is clearly still a barbette, and one that's too small to be from her main battery. While heavily buried in silt, you can also see where the barbette ends. But between that silt, the rust, and the limited camera angles, not much more can be gleaned here. Other than, in common with the rest of the ship, rust is eating away at her. There is no preserved paint to be found here. The most interesting thing with this barbette, other than the rough shape, is the plaque that the Italians left behind as a memorial to both those lost aboard the ship, and the efforts that led to her rediscovery. With the barbette done, however, there's only one more area of note on this part of Roma's wreck, and that is her bridge superstructure. Considering how close it was to the fatal explosion, and the reports of everyone in the area being killed by it, this remains remarkably intact. It rests on its side in the silt, not upright like the 90mm guns, but even with the limited pictures, it is still recognizable as Roma's distinct bridge tower. For example, her rangefinders are still clearly her rangefinders. That was a distinctly Italian design, and it is still clear even decades after she sank. You can even see inside her bridge works, though the ever-present silt makes it difficult to be sure what you're actually looking at. Though the images, as I found them, were labeled as part of her rangefinders. Moving on from that, while my Italian is non-existent, the images on screen now were labeled as her signal box after running through a translator. Perhaps her signal bridge. Regardless, these pics serve mostly to show how her superstructure is resting on its side. As we look at the bridge proper, that will become even more apparent. You can see it here via the Italian Navy's video. It's actually interesting how well that's held up over the years, considering how close it was to the fatal damage. I honestly expected it to be in worse shape before I did the research for this video. It doesn't even show fire damage, though admittedly that could be because it's all rusted away. There is also a ladder that's still recognizably a ladder, as well as a walkway seen here. That both of these held up as well as they did is honestly impressive. Unfortunately, though, that about rounds out the recognizable bits on her superstructure. There are other pictures, like what I'm putting up now, but it's much harder to be certain what they actually are. A piece resting in the debris field, away from the rest of the bridge works, seems to be the very top. But again, it's hard to tell because of how buried it is. That is also a running theme with Roma's wreck. Other than the incredibly recognizable bits, like the 90mm guns, it's hard to tell what a lot of it actually is. With that out of the way, though, we can move on. There's two more major sections to look at on her wreck. Her bow and her stern, as well as her debris field, with four interesting bits and a lot of barely recognizable debris. I'll start with her bow section, which has the least pictures to look at. In fact, there's only three bits here that are remotely clear on what they are. First, shown here, the break where her bow split from her main hull. It's a bit hard to make out, but you can see where the bow ends, and towards the top, a bit of twisted metal. This is made harder because of both the silt, and the fact that her bow is, in fact, upside down. That's not immediately apparent here, but the other pics show it better. 
Here, for example, you can see the extreme forward end jutting out from the mud and into the gloom. And if you look at the front of this, one of the more interesting images that came out of her wreck. Roma's bow crest inverted and buried in the mud. The red paint still visible, as well as the QR in the SPQR. It's this crest, more than anything, that indicates her bow section is resting inverted on the bottom. That said, there's not much else of note on the bow, so let's move on to the stern. This is similarly overturned. In fact, one of the earliest things found on the wreck was what is described as a roll fin, though that might be a quirk of translation. It is, regardless, pictured on screen here. Much as with the bow, though, there isn't a huge amount to see here. Her stern is upside down and buried in mud. The most interesting areas to look at are at the extreme stern, where it's apparent she broke apart here as well. The quality of the image on screen isn't the greatest in this regard, but you can still see where the hole broke. Another image, seen here, has a better look at the break, which shows just how much actually snapped off here. What might be more interesting is her propellers. You can see both the shafts and the propellers themselves. The shafts show the same gradual, rusting texture as the rest of Roma's hull. The propellers, on the other hand, are pristine, past the coating of silt. That isn't surprising, being as they're made out of bronze. Like with most wrecks, those will be the last part of Roma once time wears away at the rest of her hull. However, that is far in the future. Right now, the propellers and their shafts are quite easy to make out, which is one of the few benefits, from an archaeological perspective, to a capsized ship. These are often buried in the bottom and no longer visible, as could be expected. In any event, that leaves us at the end of Roma's wreck itself. The bow and stern don't have much to speak of, being as they're upside down. The cluster of weapons and superstructure were more fascinating, especially if they really are split off from the rest of the hull. However, there are still four more things to look at, all of which in her debris field. Starting with the smaller pieces, here we can see the crown that was mounted at the extreme stern of the battleship. The rough texture of rusted metal around it makes the level of preservation on the crown itself all the more impressive. Colors are still visible, as is the shape of it, in spite of the aging damage around it. Moving on from that, we have two connected pieces. Connected in the sense of being related to each other, not in the sense of being together on the bottom. One of the two pieces is Roma's aircraft catapult, torn off in her sinking and resting off on its own. No other major pieces of debris are near it. And if it weren't for the distinctive shape of a catapult, it would be incredibly difficult to know what it even was. But since we can tell it's a catapult, I think you can guess what the next piece of debris is, since it's related to the catapult. That being one of Roma's scout aircraft. An aircraft that is most assuredly in rougher shape than those found by Lexington or Hornet, recognizable largely by its engine cowling and tail. It's almost impossible to be sure what kind of plane it actually was, though the wings seem to be more like those of the biplane RO-43, as opposed to the monoplane RE-2000 fighter. Regardless of what the plane once was, it is now a rough mess of rusting metal on the seabed. It is also the second to last recognizable piece in the debris field, which brings us to the last piece. That being the barbette and turret of one of Roma's larger weapons, resting on its side, well away from the rest of the ship. This is an interesting one, because I've only been able to find two pictures of it. The angle of the gun house and the size of the rifles leans me towards this being one of her main battery turrets, perhaps even the turret too, that was thrown from the ship in the fatal explosion. But without anything to compare scale to, it's very difficult to be sure. I'll put an image of a Latorio-class battleship on screen now that shows the difference in shape of the turret faces. But even with that to compare to, it's difficult to say for sure with the pictures we have. In any case, this rounds out the video. There are other pictures of her wreck, which you can find in the linked video and map, but few are recognizable parts of the ship. And those that are, like other images of the 90mm mounts, are just different angles on what I've already shown. In the end, Roma's wreck is about as much of a mess as you'd expect,
considering her violent end. It makes it a bit more difficult to pick out details compared to other wrecks I've looked at. But by no means does this make her less interesting, nor diminish the achievement that was finding her. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.